Hello, I'm John. I'm on board Corrick, a recently restored Contessa 32. I've been asked a couple of times about handling the bow in and out of harbour, light-handed or single-handed. Um, it's a particularly benign day. I thought I'd talk a little bit about it. I hope you enjoy this video. I'm mostly used to sailing in large groups on training courses and racing you're normally well equipped with bodies and uh, getting a boat alongside and getting it away throwing bodies at the problem um, makes nearly everything go away if you find yourself in a tight spot a bloke on the bow or a girl on the stern can easily fend off and get you out of trouble that's not quite so true single-handed um, there's nothing that is terribly different all you need to do is think it through a little bit further ahead and do a little bit more preparation and take everything slowly. So I'll talk a little bit about getting away from here. It's a particular, as you can see in the background, it's particularly benign. I'm well sheltered, there's very little tide here. Um, but the techniques um, just build and build and build until you can do this um, in more difficult circumstances. Just um, full disclosure, I'm not by any means an expert at this at the moment. I am still learning. If you see something that you think I could gain from, please do share it down below. This may be slightly surprising, but one of the first and most important things I've found with this is that using the otter helm is greatly helpful. So I fix it on the arm and that will keep the tiller midships. If I decided I wanted it over at one angle or another, I can pop it into auto, press the controls. It will gently move the tiller to ish where I want it and then just put it back to standby. And that gets me a tiny bit of angle on the tiller, which as I move the boat backwards in this particular case, it will just move the stern gently in the right direction. And if I'm not propelling, that takes a data of a complication out. First thing I do is I just look at how the boat is sitting at the water and I say to myself, what would happen if all of the lines came off? Is it the wind or the tide or that is keeping us here? If we let go of the lines, would we move forwards, backwards, inside or out? Um, that gives me a clue as to which lines I need to leave till last. So if, for example, the tide is pushing us down a pontoon, then I would leave the appropriate spring and head rope or stern rope at the opposite corner, one to hold me in and the other one to hold me um, in the right position. On this particular pontoon, there's not very much tide or wind, so I have left a line on the bow stopping us going forward and holding us in. I've taken the spring off and put it inside the boat and I've done the similar with the stern line at the stern. What I'm going to do now is basically take these two lines off together and gently push the boat back, ideally with the stern going a little bit over to starboard. Well, this may end up looking deceptively simple, or maybe it is just as simple, but I've got two lines on. Um, what I do is reduce the turns on that, so I've just got um, a, a, a turn round each cleat. Uh, I hold both ropes in, in hand just in case I need to put something back on again in a hurry. Um, but once I've got those lines off and I've got them just over the guardrails such that I can get them, I basically just start pushing the boat in the right direction, whether that be, in this case, um, backwards or um, if it was a different berth, maybe forwards or pushing the bow out or pulling the stern in. The boat moves reasonably easily um, and it takes a little bit to get it going but once it is going it does seem to have a little bit of a momentum which gives you just enough breathing space to step on board. Stepping on board at the shrouds, um, I, I used to rush this but I take it a little bit more carefully, too much of a trip risk and folly in the drink at this point would be bad news. I then take the tiller arm off and just monitor which way we're going um, at this point. In this case, I used a little bit of a stern um, just in order to pull us back out of the finger pontoon, put the um, tiller over very gently just in order to continue that slight um, turn uh, with the starboard side um, heading uh, away from us. And then 
just basically I try to get as close to um, the boats on the other side as I dare because that gives you the most amount of room and by putting a sudden burst of a head on um, we can get out of that very easily but I just put the head burst on there get the tiller right so to uh, continue the the turn as I need it and then uh, straighten up and out we go easy peasy well, that's us safely out of Portsmouth Harbour. We're past uh, number four bar boy. The engine is off, sails are out. Um, the thing that I would say that I've found the most useful piece of advice is to, when trying to enter or leave a berth single-handed, try to make the boat go where it would go to naturally. So don't use lots of engine revs, don't use a um, whole pile of uh, effort in springing and trying to move the boat in directions it doesn't want to go try to make it go where it wants to go now I realize that isn't always possible but it just makes life so much easier in my limited experience it's a very gorgeous morning and I thought I would retake um, a slightly different footage of coming alongside mostly that I can do this with the camera on the port side and also showing the effect of the prop box um, that we get to port when we go astern, which is helpful. Um, again, it's a really benign day, um, but I'm doing this slightly early because the wind's due to come in from the southeast, which is going to make this berth quite difficult to do. Um, what I'll do is I'll just recap how I've laid everything out, and then I'll show you a little bit of footage of coming alongside. Um, and ideally, I won't step over the side. So the way we have this rigged is the stern line is round the stern cleat, out through the fair lead, and then it comes up and over the guardrail and I've put the bulk of it where I can actually get it. I've done a similar job on the foredeck where there is um, bow line round the cleat out through the fore lead and then elephant's ears back. The thing I would say is put your fenders on first because the ropes essentially go over the top and outside of the fenders. If you put your fenders on second there's a chance you'll trap one of your ropes. And then the very last line that I've taken, you can maybe just see it, just see it there. It's that blue and white line that is going from the cleat forward, outboard. It then comes back along the deck. I then bring it in under the guardrail but give myself a little bit of a loop here and I'm going to use that ideally to lasso the cleat at the very back end of the pontoon but let's see how it works. Having got all of your lines and fenders sorted out well away from anybody else's pride and joy then start to make an approach to your berth. Use natural transits ashore uh, both ahead of you and to the side in order to judge the uh, the true wind speed and direction as well as the tide that you're seeing it in this particular case there wasn't very much of either the berth is a little bit tricky because it is hidden until you just get right up to it it's in behind there but we make the approach reads a reasonably sharp turn to get in and as we start to see the uh, open face of the pontoon we can start to steady the boat up and gently go into a, a stern gently creeping up into the position I use a tiny bit of a stern at this point um, in order to pull the stern in and stop the boat at this point i can now grab the line that i'm going to use which will act both as a forespring and a midships or a breast rope drop that over the cleat at the f near end of the pontoon pull it in tight and that will strap us into this pontoon and I can then, if necessary, use whatever engine I need in order to jockey full position. Uh, at that point, um, now that I'm nicely stopped and to get the boat lined up in about the right position, I can jam that off into the self-tailor on the winch, um, make my way up to the shroud nice and gently, too easy to step straight into the water. These pontoons can be a bit bouncy. Grab the head rope, put it onto the cleat, and that gives me the safeguard that the boat won't travel too far forward. And then it really is just a case of come back aft, take the aft line and bang that onto the cleat as well.
and I thought I'd just show you the boat um, fully tied up just because it helped reinforce um, some of the names of things and um, the priority for ropes as we come alongside. Now I was brought up in a world where um, one rope has one job and we and therefore I've got um, a, a, a proper number of lines on. You sometimes see a boat tied up and there's one rope that is doing all the work. It's, it's tied from the back onto the jetty, back to the spring, then back onto the jetty again, then back on as a bow rope. Well, I, I try to avoid doing that and try to put in as much redundancy as I can. Um, uh, so I'll just show you that and we'll talk it all through. I think the thing that I most worry about when I'm coming alongside is, is, is basically traveling too far along and moving the bow onto the wood here. So the first priority for me is almost always to make sure that the fore spring is, is on and is able to hold us back. So once I've got that one on, I then adjust this rope here at the back, which is effectively both a back spring and a stern rope. Um, I've got a couple of ropes that I leave tied onto the jetty with snubbers on and that um, I use to double up but what you will see if you look um, over there is that it goes onto the cleat at the back of the boat. Once I'm in the right place what I then do is put this bow line on which goes from the, um, the bow opposite the side that we're engaged, holds the bow, it sits on the foredeck it travels across the deck foredeck and then comes out through the other fair lead and then onto the jetty here with a bowline that's been taken around the cleat and that stops the bow being either pushed in by the wind or pushed off all of which would put a whole pile of stress on the other lines so that keeps us in much the same place the last thing i do is i then go back and i basically turn all of the clove hitches that i put on into round turn and two half hitches then it's time to put the rest of the boat to bed. That was a useful overview of putting the boat alongside from a straightforward uh, mechanics of what ropes, what order, preparation, etc. The choice of the berth, how you get alongside, which way you point, the times that you do it, um, those things make this um, quite a bit more complicated um, in, in circum certain circumstances, particularly when there's a big tide running down a finger pontoon. Um, what I would say is have a good look at it, think it through, don't rush in, um, take it um, carefully and if it does look like it's too hard for that time or that wind speed then go somewhere else for a while and come back a couple of hours later maybe when the tide is less or the wind has dropped. Um, a couple of hours could save you quite a bit of pain and grief. Um, I hope that's been useful. I've certainly learned a little bit um, in the last couple of months in doing this and I hope that that has been useful to you. Thank you very much for watching.